Hey everybody, <clears throat> welcome back to another episode of um, The Factory. Alright, so here we are today in episode 9, almost at 10. So, um, I did some base expansion, uh, just because I'm going to be dealing with the multi-block machines, and until I move in, well, I just wanted some space to put uh, the big boy machines. But uh, speaking of the base, uh, why don't we head on over? And I will show you guys the uh, current status of that base right now. I was doing a lot of building off camera. Well, not, well, building and reshaping, I suppose. Uh, I'm just going to... <clears throat> so I don't fall any stupid holes. Okay. So yeah, like I said, I was doing some reshaping, digging, and all that. And here is what the base looks like right now. So the top rooms, I think they were already done in the first place. Um, so I may have not prettied up the upper floor. Uh, I also added this extra part here, the uh, you know the box, I guess. And then I decided to put some. Uh, cobblestone down there like that so that I can run wires through and just be able to hide it inside of the cobblestone if that looks good or if it needs to maybe be altered anyway feel free to let me know like should I put an extra layer of blocks so that it's flush with this pillar and this pillar you know otherwise um yeah got some rooms down here Made sure that uh, there was this overhang right here on each side. Oh, and I didn't uh, format this room just yet, but no big deal. I'll probably do that later. Okay, so that's enough of... Oh, and I mean, there is this extra room here, which I might be putting uh, putting my power base, power stuff here. And then additionally, I was thinking about this. As far as expanding this base, uh, I'm probably not going to go further down to the ground. What I might do is push this wall out and add another set of rooms as needed. Um, there might be a time where I'm going to need to use like both the upper floor and the lower floor as one room. But... I think that would only be the case for possibly the mob farm. But uh, I'll have to think about that because if I'm going to do a mob farm, I'm going to need a big, big, big room. Like 17 by 17 or something like that. I could also just possibly put the... Wait, I say mob farm. I meant tree farm. If I do do a tree farm, it might just be above, like on the roof. So I won't have to worry about like one room being so massive compared to the rest of the base. <clears throat> okay, so and another thing I actually found out about is the the back command. It also I, I didn't know why I don't know why I never thought of this before. I knew the back command existed, especially when I died, I would just go back to my body. But I didn't realize that it also works if you use the home command recently. So if you teleport you can also teleport back. Oh, what? Oh, right. I hit. Okay. Yeah, I just derped. Anyway, uh, so yeah, let's get started on the multi block machine, shall we? The uh, blast furnace, actually. So, if I'm not mistaken, we had made the coils already, and we have a quest progress. Oh, nickel. Right. Okay. Uh, okay, so let's get back to the beginning here. So, we need the controller. We have the coils. We also need the heat-proof casings and all of these buses. Uh, I actually have machine holes right here ready to go. However, I do need to get two chests and two pieces of glass. Okay, there's that. Um, I know it's got to be a chest right here somewhere. There we go. Chest. All right. Oh, and while we're at it, uh, cables. Do I not have some cables anywhere? <clears throat> no? Okay, I guess I don't. No problem. I'll just make some more of them. I'm going to need it anyway. And then the rubber. 
So I'm going to pop that in there. What was it? Oh, yeah. I was making conductive iron. That's right. Because I need, I'm going to need, uh, well, the power cables to hook up to the machines, but also to power or to also to craft another two CEFs because I like to give each of my multi-block machines uh, their own CEF. Well, in the event that I have multiples of, say, the Blast Furnace, I can share one CEF among, what was it, four different Blast Furnaces? Because there's two input buses. They each take two amps, so it's four. Yeah, so 16. So four Blast Furnaces share one CEF. And technically, I could probably have one CEF power both the Blast Furnace and the Pyrolyze, but... Um, I'm not bothered by materials. Okay, so let me just put those in there, and that will cook up for when I need to make the CEFs. Let's get uh, the cables going here. All right, so let's get rid of this. So we're going to put down the hole right there, and we're going to do glass. And there we go. Get rid of that. Put the one on the bottom, and we get the output. And then chest. Chest. So output bus, input bus. Uh, now we need two of these. Oh, I turned the music on because I was trying to test my sound. There we go. Uh, okay, everything's good here. Now we need the heat proof casing. So that is going to be... So we're going to need 12 of these machine casings, but we also need one set of invar frames. So if I remember correctly, oh, it's right here. I'm going to need three plates and five sticks, uh, rods, rather. So maybe put some crap away. Grab, I know I made invar. Here we go. Okay, so I already have the three invar I need right there. So actually, you know what? I'm going to need, let's see, heat proof it's two words heat proof i there we go okay that's right isn't it yeah save okay and then end of our frame get rid of that save lathe okay so i'm gonna need 23 Invar plates. Okay. And the three rods. So one, two, three. Okay, so that's going to cook up. And we're getting that conductive iron. Let's see. Can I put... I'm going to put this right here. That's going to take some time still. In the meanwhile, we're getting that conductive iron. So, I wanted to borrow two of these. We're going to go over here. Actually, no, not that one. We're going to come over here and we're going to say that in there. Net. Oh, I need to grab a. Okay, so. We have the four, 16 times conductive wires. And we should. It's. Oh, okay, they're in here. So that's an interesting thing to note. The, G, the Greg Tech crafting stations don't seem to like the JEI inventory search. Uh, and conduit. Okay, so that's unfortunate. I'm going to need more conduit if I'm going to be making the CEFs. Where? Crap chest. No, I don't want that. Um, Here, I'm just going to make some more chests. Oh. There we go. Okay. Back to the doodad here. Okay, so there's one CEF. 
Uh, let's check on this. I think that's everything, right? All right, so the end of our frame. <clears throat> so one and boop, and the wrench got moved. There it is. The boop. Oh, okay. Oh, don't tell me it made more than I wanted. Okay, good, we're good. Okay, no problem. So, heat, proof. So it's gonna need a hammer and the wrench, which should be there already. Yeah, there we go. 12 heat proof casings. Oh, and we're still gonna need the controller, of course. So, blast furnace. Okay, so we're gonna put one of our heat casings back inside. And for the meanwhile, I'm gonna put those in there for, uh, for room. Now we need the circuits. We need three furnaces and tin cables, which should be here. Three or two, I mean. Okay. Now cobblestone. Pop that in. Bada boom. And there we go. Last furnace. Sweet. Okay, I think I'm going to put this like here. That's the wrong block. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So that's the CEF. So here, I guess. And then from here, I'll build it out like this. Uh, gotta go grab the other casings, other blocks. There we go. Get the energy inputs. Bada boop, bada boop. And we got the coils. So now for the coils, we need to do a, uh, a hollow ring like this for two layers. And let's see, for this, I'm gonna put the item buses on the bottom. So output here. Input there, good. Now we're gonna have to put the fluid and input, the fluid and output hatches on this just because I opted to make those and I would have to make more invar, invar uh, to make the heat proof casing. So I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna put the casings like this. Wait a minute, what? Um, is th what? How are you missing? One, two, three. There's three blocks that we missed out on. Wait, did I space out here? Wait. Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, seventeen, eighteen. Okay, you know what? Uh, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna go ahead and make the extra uh, um, heat proof casings and probably get rid of the hatches up there. Okay, uh, back shortly. Okie dokie, uh, we're back. So, as you can see here, the block is fully finished. I took out the input hatches for the fluid and made the extra heat proof, heat machine, heat, mach heat casings, whatever. All right, so now it's ready to go. It's idling. We need to give it power as well as, well, I guess items. I don't know where I was going with that thought, but uh, no worries. So where'd my wrench go? Okay. So we have our input hatches right here. So I'm probably going to put like the CEF somewhere right below this. And I don't have the wires I need on me just yet. They are in the chest here. And I'm just going to combine these up. Get our 16. And boop, boop. Now I still need more conductive iron for the pyrolyzed oven, but we'll get there in due time. So, 
I'm gonna come back here. Oh, right. Oh, wait. Uh, give me a second. I need to borrow some conductive iron here because uh, conductive iron energy conduit. Where is that binder? Here's some right here. Okay. Come back over here. Oop. And pop that in. Oop, pop that in. Oh, okay, that's weird. But we got the other CEF that we need. There we go. So this CEF is going to go under this machine. And then the other CEF will go under the pyrolyze oven. Now I am going to need more power. So let's go back to that drawer here. I'm just going to finish off the rest. Mm, this might not be enough. Might lower this cabling. Uh, yeah, I might like to, I might just drop the floor here like this. Oop. Uh. Oh, that's unfortunate. Wait, I think we're fine. Yeah, we're fine. Oh, there we go. Okay, cool. So now it's more flush with the ground. And I can cover up. Oh, wait, I need to uh, rotate those first. Wrench. There we go. Okay. So that's going to be filled because it's a very low capacity. So why don't I get a flux capacitor going? So that's sulfur, copper, lead, and redstone. Redstone. Sulfur, sulfur, and not nickel, lead, there it is, do, 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 uh, what am I missing here? Oh, it's just being its usual Greg Techie self. All right, so we'll put this one in here, and that's going to start filling up relatively quickly. We're making, uh, what was it, 480? A maximum oh it's not it's it's powering up i guess right now but a maximum of 480 rf per tick all right so let me just cover this gap in the floor bust out my chisel if i can find it chisel 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 did i put it away somehow Go. Did I did I put in a chest somewhere? Ah, there it is. Why, why doesn't it show up? That's so stupid. Anyway, uh, okay, so bada boom, bada boom, bada boom, bada boom. There we go. I still need to hide this, but eh, no big deal. Okay, so the pyrolyze oven, pyrolyze, that is, oh yeah, that's another thing I wanted to talk about. With the new Greg Tech version, I think it's Greg Tech, it might also be uh, JEI, but essentially there's now support where it shows you all the blocks you need. So that's pretty cool. I mean, these, Multi-block machines are, they're, for me, easy to remember because I've built them so many times. But there's other things like the fusion reactor where, yeah, you can see it, it tells you all the blocks you want. Uh, oh, yeah, you can still rotate it. So, yeah, I mean, that's just a cool thing for beginners who don't know. And for those who do know more about the game who just need an extra reminder. Anyway. So we're going to need 
so we have the casings, but we also are gonna are gonna need ULV machine casings. We're gonna need well, you can ignore the HV part in this. You don't need HV, but we're gonna need. Actually, we ha already have the output hatches and the input hatches, so that's good. But we're gonna need input for energy, and the item uh, buses there, as well as the pyrolyze oven itself. And that it's gonna require we make the primitive processors. We don't have the means to make the electronic processors, the orange circuits, just yet. Um, actually, how far away are we from that? Oh, let me get that quest claimed. Oh, I still need to grab... Oh. Oh. Okay, so... Right, that reminds me. Now that we have the blast furnace done, we can start making aluminium. So, I'm going to go over to my little crate here. We're going to pop this in. And you can see it, the machine lit up here. So, that is smelting up uh, aluminium. So with that, we'll be able to unlock the next chain of event. Uh, oops, hold on. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. All right, so what was I doing? Uh, I guess there was a conduit. Oh, all right, aluminum. Right, right, right. So the aluminium, uh, the, okay, we got some good amount of aluminum right there. And there's our quest complete. Sweet. Okay, so now we can make machine holes. And well, I think we can say that we're safely in the medium voltage tier now. I mean, we can make the machines, but we haven't really jumped to medium voltage, is what I'm trying to say. But regardless, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get these compressed into plates get a little more oh it's just, it thinks pretty slow so we'll be able to upgrade this eventually to what will essentially be shown as hv because to kind of explain we're using lv energy input hatches but because we have two of them it's taking in a total of 128 eu per tick so with the with the lv energy the LV energy input hatch, it's 32 EU per tick, but it takes in two amps. So 32 times two is 64, and times two is 128. So that's how you kind of explain why it shows 128. Okay, so we've got some plates going on. Grab a little bit more aluminum. Okay, so next up, we are going to need to make a couple of these babies. So I'm going to bust out the old calculator. Where'd it go? There it is. All right, so primitive processor. And I'm probably going to make like eight. All right, so we're going to get the recipes clocked in here. Uh... Jungle. Okay. Save. Uh, da, da, da. Copper dust. Oh, I know what it's complaining about. Okay. So now we have the alloy smelter. We can add in the new recipe for ingots and copper. And I th think that's it as far as recipes here. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and get all this stuff ready. And uh, I'll come back when that is done because, well, we're, well, yeah, okay, I'll go do that right now. And uh, I will be back in a few. Hey, everybody. Okay, we're back. So, uh, I went and made some things off camera. And, okay, so, the first thing I did was I made all of the primitive circuits I was going to need to make these bad boys. Nothing new here. But as you can see with the primitive processor recipe, we got wire and plates, the diodes, and red LED cables. So the diodes 
are you know tin wire and some glass panes. I think we covered this before. Regardless, I'm gonna go ahead and craft those up, and we got our first tier two circuits. Nice. All right, so over here, oh, another quest complete. And then over here we have the uh, the shell of our pyrolyzed oven, and I primed the uh, CEF right here because. Right here, we're going to have our two energy inputs, and the rest is going to be uh, casings. And then, oh, actually, additionally, there will be a energy, uh, a fluid input casing right here, but I'll explain that when I get to that, um, which actually I can do that right now. Uh, oh, right here. Okay. So I'm going to place some of these parts down. So the fluid output hatch, I'll put somewhere like here. Okay. No, that, that's the wrong hatch. The fluid output hatch goes on there. And the fluid input hatch will go here. And let me just get down here and wrench that. So now it's going to accept fluids in through this side here. Um, okay, that works. All right. Now um, I need to make the other parts of the, of the multi-block, which I have all the holes I need. Uh, tin cables, good. So we're gonna make the energy inputs. One, two. We're, oh, we're gonna make the chest or the uh, item inputs and outputs. The item bus, yeah. And that's it. Input, output, yeah. Because we already have the hatches, right? So we're gonna put the input here, output there. The energy inputs here and here. Oh, we didn't make the multi-block block yet. Uh, controller, I mean. So where should we make it? Here's fine, I guess. So pyro lice. Oh, you know what? I think I forgot one thing. Uh, okay, we have the pump, we have the piston. Okay, so we need another UV ULV machine hole. So let me just go and make that real quick. Uh, that is going to be red alloy cable with iron plating. So that will be a quick fix. Uh, am I low on iron again? Good, lo good lord, I need to go mine you off camera. But that's not a problem, but that will take some time. So I believe I have, well, I do have some iron plates right here, but I want to make those, I want to turn those into the casings for the rest of the multi-block. So we need, oh, so the quest calls for uh, 12. Let's see, now with the, with the pyrolyzed oven, we're gonna have the controller in the middle. So I'll do something like this. And, oh, would you look at that? It actually planned accordingly to use the um, machine casing. Okay. Um, those are both tin cables. All right, so let me just do this. Uh, grab some of the plates here. And we're almost low on time. So I can probably get this finished off. Right, there we go, and, oop. oh, uh, we will need Cooper Nickel, so that's eight, I think it was, so that should be good, and voila, that will smelt up, and then I gotta press it in the wire mill, and then uh, this will be a good uh, end of the episode, oh, you know what, while I'm doing this, I forgot I need one more machine component, and that's going to be a basic fluid heater. So with the fluid heater, I need this as the pyrolyzed oven is going to take in steam as well as, say, coal or charcoal or wood logs, and it turns those items into a fuel like creosote or wood byproducts or, you know, something like that. I do, however, have a machine right here. I need... Some copper cabling, uh, good. 
we go. So we'll pop that in there. And we need two circuits. Did I eat my circuits? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, so I might do that. I'll make a, I'll get a circuit ready to go off camera between episodes and I'll get the heater uh, ready to go in the next episode. Okay, so what was I waiting for? Oh yeah, a Cooper nickel. So we'll get the uh, the pyrolyzed oven online and and working in the next episode because part of the pyrolyzed oven is going to be how we are going to start to make better circuits. If I can show you real quick. So the coal will go into the pyrolyzed oven along with steam and we get out from it coke, which is a better coal. You can see it, it burns twice as long and we get phenol. Phenol is used in conjunction with the coated circuit board to get a phenolic substrate. And that, once we make the assembler, will allow us to make cheaper circuits. So that will be a win-win when we get there. Okay, so that's... We... Oh, right. Pyrolyse. Okay, so that needs two fours. Oh, I made too many. What? Oh, right. I forgot the uh, circuit. The reason we made those big boy circuits is this, again, takes the primitive processors. And there we go. Is there a request for that? Excuse me? Okay, I thought uh, I was mistaken. Uh, I guess you do have to have the blocks on hand. That's weird. All right, but no worries. I'll get this quest complete. And then we will cut the episode because we are over time. Okay, where my magnet go? And there we go. The oven complete. The, the quest anyway. Let me just quickly pop these in. Bada boom, it's formed. Sweet. All right, that is it for now, guys. Uh, I will see you in the next one. Ta-ta for now.